Hello everyone. Hi. Today's pod, today's discussion, oh. whatever they call it, is about <laughs> what is the new normal likely to look like? Well, that's a bit of a mouthful. Exciting. Anyway, before we start that, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Sean Woolley, Managing Director of Cloud9 Spain. With me today I have this one. Emma, Business Development Manager. That one. Dominic, Sales Director, or that one. And this one as well. <laughs> Rebecca, my Bayer Interiors. Yeah, Rebecca's from our, um, our furniture company that we do a lot of business with, who looks after a lot of the, the after sales and furnishing of, uh, of properties. And um, she's worked with us for a number of years. We trust her implicitly, and she's lived here for um, a long time. Long so time. she's one of us, really. So I want an intro like this. Wow. I know, <laughs> but everyone's oh, used to, everyone's used to oh, seeing no. you, Dom. Wow. You know, you, you've got. She's the new girl. Was, that was beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> I have to say, it was a great help. Closing a client with your help, huh? Yeah. yeah. She's lovely. <laughs> she knows what she's doing, this one. She does. Yeah. She's got, and she's got access well, I, to some I, really nice stuff. I officially was following my dad around when he was selling houses from the age of nine. So really? it's just, it's the only thing it's I in your know. Blood. I just it's know how, blood. I'm obsessed with houses. <laughs> okay. I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> no, Rebecca's great because very often estate agents aren't, aren't well known for sort of handling the, the after sales side of it. You know, a lot of good salespeople, they just, yeah, right, on to the next one. But what Rebecca does really well is she liaises with the developers or the, the vendors, lawyers, make sure that things are connected properly, that she's got access to properties so that when she comes to furnish them, by the time you turn up as a new buyer, everything's done. So, um, but not just after sales, if I may, Alan. Oh, right. Is this I, all going to be all about Rebecca? This, this yeah, I think we should. This oh is really new normal. Should we go on? <laughs> yeah. Should I the tell the normal. story really quickly? I had a client who wanted to buy a penthouse. <laughs> Wait, it was really unfurnished. It was not really pretty inside. I brought Rebecca in. She created the image of how it's going to look like. The clients decided instantly. Yeah. So it's not just about yeah. post sale; it's also the closing. Yeah, act helping. Where I think Rebecca, Rebecca can uh, help. Charlie Dimmock. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> you make things look lovely. Charlie Dimmock, that's a blast from the past. She's back on air, isn't she? she is. With her pendulous appendages. I was say, she's the one that doesn't wear the bra. Right? <laughs> she's the one. I do wear the yeah. bra. <laughs> so I've called you Kirsty Allsop before, haven't I? I've got Charlie. A, a fat Kirsty Allsop, I think I said to you, wow. which I did meant came out all wrong. Yeah, it came out all wrong. We've got Charlie, Charlie Dimmock. It's okay because you're Phil. People say I'm Phil Spencer. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we know what we Brad. call me, but not on this podcast. And, and we've got Bradley Cooper is, with his hair. This is Brad. Look at him, look at him. his new, new bouffant hair. So he'll, we, have his own, he'll have his own hair. Shall we reintroduce really ourselves? This yeah. is, by the way, how I coped with the lockdown. I just oh, let great segue. You restyled yourself. You I let it flow. See what happened. Yeah. Oh, have you gone all au naturel and all that? Have you gone like, well, you know? Not at all. I only washed the hair once a month. Still use deodorant, I hope. No, of course not. Everything's natural here. No, I just said, you know, I'm going to let it flow. That's how I cook the So, lockdown. as you can see, the coronavirus uh, lockdown has had an effect on us, yeah. on our mental health. We are here in Mabea in Spain, and we have been in some form of lockdown for 11, 10 weeks. I've lost track. I've lost track. What even year? I think, I, think, I think this is the end of week 11. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, but lockdown, lockdown maybe was... Well, I think well, yeah. easy now. I just remember, I just, I just kept... <sighs> When the schools shut, basically, the day they told me that there was no more school, it was the 13th of March. Because you celebrated. <laughs> it was no. the 13th of March and it's now the end of May. So that's, a, yeah. Yeah. But don't worry, the kids would have broken up in mid-June anyway, so you've only... Yeah, I've only got four weeks left. And then, yeah, and then it's and then holidays. Then it's summer holidays. <laughs> yeah. But they, they cancelled summer school too. Really? Well, yeah, because you can't have gatherings of children. So. Uh, it's all very confusing. I went last night to a, a quiz night. And so I had to wear a, a mask on the street in case I passed someone within kind of a metre and a half of me. Well, about a metre and a half here, aren't we? Yeah, um, and then I sat down with a group of people I haven't seen for 10 weeks. Lovely. Around a table. And it's, like, very, is, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a bit it's weird. It's very some hard rules to know that you, what the rules are and how yeah. you're supposed to follow them. And there are some them. rules you think, yeah, that makes complete sense. You know, people are dying, blah, blah, blah. But there are some you think... Because of the no. rules, because of the, all these confusing rules, do you know what I'm doing? Staying in. <laughs> yeah, me too. Until <laughs> yeah. so it's all over. Yeah. And I'm not going to break yeah. any laws. Or no. And also, you think in. I kind Apart of... Apart coming here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but in my mind as well, it's like we've literally been locked in for 10 weeks. I'm not going to dash around hugging and kissing people for the sake of another few weeks. until. Well, yeah, it's exactly. all got, I'm just going to wait. Till, hopefully, it's all going to be over in another month. Well, that's then it. we can... I mean, the great news from Spain is that yesterday, I think we had one death mm -hmm. in the whole of Spain, which yeah. is... It worked. 
it has worked. It has worked. For all the moaning I've done, it has worked. It has worked. Um, I think there's going to be casualties, business-wise. Economically, yeah. Yeah, economically, because I don't think the support has been there for a lot of people. Because the way the employment laws are here, not everybody is on contracted terms, so it, they kind of slip through the net. I think the problem you've got is you have incredible employee protection in Spain. Yeah. You know, the contracts are amazingly strict and things like that, but what's happened is the knock-on effect is that is a lot of people aren't employed legally. Mm. Yeah. So it means that, so people that, so for instance, I know people that work in Corte Inglés and things like that, they've been on a proper contract, so now they've got a payment, they've got yeah. an employment payment. The people that have fallen through the cracks are the people that have been working off the books, cash in hand, yeah. restaurant assistants, yeah. Yeah. things like that. And or a part-time contract or a full-time contract. contract. You know, yeah. and, and they're not getting any help mm. because their employer, because of the expense of putting them on proper contracts, Exactly, that comes back to, the, to a fault with the system, that they it's, need to make it easier there needs to be a balance. for employers yes. to actually take people onto their books. And at the moment, the Spanish authorities and the Spanish government don't make it easy for companies to hire people mm. because it's, it's, well, it's, it's no, But it's important to have employee protection. It's very important. But what's happened is it's so expensive for the employer yeah. now, they've actually gone full circle yeah. and it's making it worse. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So how have we all coped? I'm fine. You're fine. I'm fine. You're fine. I'm, I'm quite happy. Right. You're all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually quite unsociable like under normal yeah. circumstances. <laughs> as well. the, hair, the hairdressers are open again. No, no, I'm not going to cut my hair. Oh, okay. As long as I have such beautiful long hair, I'll keep it. Yeah, good for you, mate. Thank you. <laughs> good, for, good for you. <laughs> Let's not knock his confidence just yet. Um, so we've, we've coped okay. You're, you've got a little one at home? Yep. You've, he's you've actually, coped. I've actually been really proud of him. He's done incredibly yeah. well. What he's, he's missed his friends, he's missed his grandma, because we've kept that distance because she's very high on, on the risk list. Um, but he's actually coped really, really well. I think kids are amazingly resilient. Mm -hmm. They um, are. As long as you don't, as long as you try and avoid showing them your anxiety, you have yeah. to keep it as upbeat as possible. I think the difference between, for instance, Spain and the UK, because obviously we're, well, three of us are, are British, mm. is that in the UK it's kind of like, adv <laughs> yeah, keep away, Dom. <laughs> That's why it's there. There's kind of this, this wishy-washy advice stuff. In Spain, the advice was very firm yeah. and it was very strict and it was kind of like, stay at home. Yeah. And the thing about Spain is, if you don't stay at home and you decide to walk out down the street, you're going to get a Massive copper with a, with a gun. Mm. <laughs> telling you to go home. So you're probably going to listen to him and you're probably going to go home. In England, it's just been a little bit light. And I think, light. The, I think the yeah. way the society evolves and, and how it exists here in Spain, you know, a lot of it has been about protecting the elderly. Yeah. You know, and nobody's, you know, everybody acknowledges that if any of us got the coronavirus, we may well have had it. We wouldn't necessarily end up in ICU. We might, but we probably wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But it's about protecting our grandparents. And I think the big difference between here and the UK is, in the most part, families depend on grandparents for childcare here. Mm. Yeah, and they a lot of them live huge, in, don't and they? And a lot of them live with you. Yeah. yeah, you know, there's, there is. I don't know one family who hasn't got an elderly grandparent who they haven't been worried about. They've either protected them in their house or they've completely isolated. Mm -hmm. Most people have nominated one member of the family that does the shopping mm -hmm. or that they've got elderly parents, that they've got brothers to see. You know, they have been a huge focus and I think that's why people have accepted the lockdown. Spanish are very family focused. We've, we've all got an old person that we, we're scared mm -hmm. is going to get it. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, I think it, it also suited them fine to have some time yeah. off. Grandparents are kind of put Honestly, on the pedestal, I think aren't they? enjoy that too. Haven't you guys enjoyed it a little bit? Yeah. Some time off, some time to reflect. Yeah. C catch up and lie. Do I carry on work? I don't because like... a lot of what I do, I work from home anyway. Yeah, you My do. clients are all overseas, mm. so it's, I've carried on. But I'm a bit of a rebel. I don't, don't like... Do. Yeah, I don't like <laughs> being told what to do. As you it's know. really made me laugh the way you've reacted. Yeah, so I've gone on Facebook and started annoying everyone and stirring up trouble with my conspiracy theories and stuff like that. No, but I, I, I totally get it. I totally, and I think Spain has actually handled it really well because for that short period where we had to lock down, they told us to lock down. Yeah. And there were two weeks, weren't there, where we literally couldn't do anything. No. Which was crazy, um, if you think about it. Which was mad. It was like living in, in a hindsight, state. In it is just mental. If, if, yeah, if I yeah. look back retrospectively, one day I'm going to be like, wow. And I actually, I have to say, in a, in a weird way, it felt exciting because it's, it's something that was disruptive unknown, to yeah, our it was unknown. normal, yeah. normal yeah. day-to-day living. Yeah. It was so, that first two weeks I was just admit, like... I must admit, I spent what the first day... <laughs> 
Yeah. I made the mistake of just sitting and watching the news and reading the papers, and I got oh, my, yeah. I got myself in. I a did it for the state. first week, I think. Yeah. I was no, just no, I constantly. It day, it's too much exposure. Day, yeah. I was I was in a real state. I was yeah. like, no, I'm not doing this mm. anymore because it's it's so out of my control. There's yeah. nothing. All I can do is control my little bubble. Mm. Yeah. So let's make. This and it was never good news. It was always it was always how many have died today, how many have died in the last hour. Yeah. And you think, oh, for crack, give us some good news, for instance. Um. Yeah, interesting. Just to, to give you an idea where we are in, in Spain at the moment in terms of, of easing out of lockdown, they're doing it by way of, of different regions moving to different phases of um, releasing these restrictive measures. So in Andalusia, um, everyone is on to phase two, apart from Malaga and Granada, which both go into phase two on Monday. What we have at the moment is we have shops are open, hairdressers are open, um, albeit with certain restrictions. Next week, um, shopping centres open, yeah. um, bars and restaurants are allowed to open indoors, again with reduced capacity. And it's interesting because a lot of businesses have decided not to open um, because here in Spain, um, if you're going to open your business again, you have to open your business with all of your staff. You can't just select half of them for mm -hmm. half your capacity of customers. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have to bring them all back onto the payroll. But if you've got a bar, for instance, that's got a terrace and you're the only bit that you're allowed to serve food and drinks on is half of your terrace. So not indoors and not mm -hmm. half your You've got all these staff. It is, just isn't financially viable to open up. So and of course, next week, they're going to be allowed to open indoors. Indoors, yeah. but, but half in again. in Spain, or... we're very much outdoors. Yeah. People don't I'm generally into want the to summer. sit yeah. indoors. So it's been a little bit of a sort of financial um, juggling act. Because there are help there, isn't it? Because they say so the companies, the reason they have to take the staff on is because for this period, they've not had to pay them. The staff have been paid by the state. Yeah. But then there's a lot of controversy. Have the people been paid? What's the percentage yeah. they've been paid? If they come back, are they going to get paid? Yeah, it's yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. So, so some have chose to remain closed. Yeah. I, I think what we're, what we're seeing in Spain at the moment, because I thought last week or the week before when it was, we were into phase one, uh, that we'd be hired out, that shops would be open, cafes and restaurants, well, I'd be able to go and eat where I want. No, no, no. Well, the restrictions on shops, for instance, I was talking to a lady who owns a boutique in San Pedro. She's not bothering opening at all. She's doing online stuff, which she's yeah. been doing since day one, until they're in phase three, because she said there is the country, things like, you know, if anybody tries anything on, you then have to steam oh, clean it. Oh, it's a nightmare it. for clothes you know, retailers. So somebody to, go, to have somebody come into a clothes shop and browse, you can't do it just too, she said it's no. just too stressful. Yeah. And also, not just the fact that she's breaking the law. She said, I don't want anyone to get sick. Mm. Yeah. You know, I don't want to ever think, see, if I don't want to hear one of my clients has got sick and to think, oh my God, was it because mm. they came into my shop and I hadn't cleaned something properly? So she's just decided to not, to wait. Has it, has, uh, has this lockdown, has this weird period of, of sort of enforced um, lockdown, has it altered our views on, on life, on home life, interaction with friends, socialising, work? What's our, what's our thoughts? Are we feeling more chilled about life in general? That nothing matters anymore. That it's. You know. I think it's made you real. I think we realise what things you're missing, and therefore the things that are important. I miss being able to just think. I can pop back to the UK and see my family mm. for a long weekend. Yeah. Mm. That's, That's the thing of... that I've tried not to think about. Yeah. Mm. Because when my sister was, I saw my sister in January. I think it was. And she was due to come over for Easter, which obviously she couldn't do. Mm. And now I don't know when she's mm. next going to come over. And even if maybe she can fly in July, do I want her to get on an aeroplane in July? And you, you, you don't know what the level, you, it's, it's kind of it's the very unknown, personal isn't it? as yeah. well. It's very personal to whether people will want to do that or not. Yeah. I, think, I think we've been lucky or fortunate in that none of us have got ill. Mm -hmm. yeah. Touch wood. And um, we haven't had to do any mercy dash we haven't had to yeah. jump on a plane to go to a foreign country because someone's dying and because that must be awful yeah. and i think it's people in those or situations not being able to go more to the point yeah that's what i mean yeah. so, sorry yeah. yeah and and you know being stranded in a country because yeah. you're on lockdown where you're needed somewhere else emotionally and 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 you know whatever so i think we're, we're fortunate in that we haven't had to do that um i had a friend stuck in morocco casablanca <laughs> and he didn't take it easy really yeah because he was going to stay and some of his friends left and he literally stayed alone because he had a later flight that got delayed for the next day and then the lockdown came. Like, it was really like a movie So he's scene. on his own in Morocco? And still. 
Mm. And Morocco's got no intention of opening the border any time Yeah, soon. that's what I mean. And he's stuck in a little apartment that he only rented for like five, six days. Oh, my God. Um, obviously, the Spanish government are very keen, as we all are, to get the Spanish economy moving again. Mm. And there's talk about them being desperate not to lose the summer season here which is why I think all the thinking is going, sort of gearing towards the end of June, beginning of July, almost like 1st of July, the gates are going to be opened, come on down, the price is right, get here, come to Spain, enjoy your holidays, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Do we think that's wise? It makes me feel a little anxious, anxious. Yeah, really. because it's only a month away and we're still just getting to phase two and then all of a sudden it's going to be, or will it, will, will it all in, suddenly come back? Do we back? know in which phase tourism will be allowed from foreign countries? So well, they say that all the phases the of, of lockdown, of all the phases of lockdown are due to end on 28th of June. So that is the date where, well, there's, where you will be delayed. delayed. By, by yeah, well, no, everyone will be out of it, but they reckon by the 28th of June. That's the end of the state of alarm, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and that will be when you are free to do whatever you want. I think as long as people come and they respect hygiene measures, wash their hands, there's doesn't touch everything. There's still a lot of unknown, isn't there? Yeah. That's the thing. Then maybe it should be quite all right. But I'm looking forward to seeing it busy again. Yes. Because oh, it's quite sure. sad. I was in Benamadana yesterday looking yeah. at a villa and the paseo was just... It was quite like, yeah, wow, it's, 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 it is weird. it's summer. People have got out Where is everyone? Well as of getting out and about. Yeah. And it's one of the things, actually, when you say what I realised, it reminds you of how lucky you are mm. to be, not lucky at whether it's been planning or a lot of hard work, but we do live in a fabulous oh, place. Oh yeah, you drive around it and, and you, you know, notice people, it now. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> and people said to me, oh, you know, the economy is going to be affected and it's going to be terrible in tourism. You know, I genuinely feel that even if tourism doesn't start in July, it waits till August or even September, this is still an amazing place. There's so many, there's there's so many beautiful over. things you, you know, can do for the, free. The, the, the reasons yeah. to be here haven't gone away. But mm. we still need to live we still need to earn money to keep a roof, roof over our heads and food on the table yeah. and there has to come a point where we have to look after people financially yes. whether that's allowing them back to work mm -hmm. and doing what they do best or whether we are prepared, prepared to sacrifice swathes of the economy mm. and people's mental health yeah. we rely on well, tourism I mean it's a it's a massive call this for yes. any government the in thing the world. I understood and correct me if I'm wrong but the basis of making the decisions on the different phases and the reason for the lockdown it's it was because basically no more people can get sick because the hospitals can't cope and mm. um, yeah. so somebody said to me at one point that there was something like 70 people in ICU in the Costa del Sol and it's just please don't send us any more that was the reason we're now at the stage where You've got a government who's recognising, okay, we need to reinvest. We need to make the health system stronger. They've had this time to recover. Now in the, they're in a situation where people can get sick and they can take care of them. Mm. So as individuals, we take sensible precautions. We take care of the old people that are our more vulnerable. But you can go about more of a normal life. Yeah, but it just takes one, doesn't it? I know. Yeah. It just takes one idiot or 3,000 football fans. And there's know. a lot. And there's a lot of idiots, yeah, and you know, it is a concern. I think what they're hoping, hoping desperate for is the fact there'll be a vaccine, yes, in quarter four. So that I if, think I'm keeping if, my mom in until then, basically, yeah. you know. So <laughs> if, if there's a, if there's a, um, you know, a, a degree of reinfection or whatever, that there will be something medical that, that can be done quickly because you know, if it spikes again, then it's it's a problem, it's a, it's a problem, but. I believe anyway we should just get back on with it and I, I have different views about how it should have been tackled first time around but I, I think that you know we'll lose far more people economically yeah yeah and and people will die from, and um, that's why yeah. Sweden adopted a different model yeah. I do honestly believe and I'm probably with you on this that elderly and vulnerable should have been protected absolutely yeah so invest them millions billions of, of pounds in protecting the really vulnerable sectors of society mm. and almost isolating them yeah. um, and, and let the rest of us get on with it. recognise the fact that, you know, one of the problems Spain's got, yes, it has a socialist government at the minute, but it didn't. Yeah. And there were lots of cuts 
to the hospital systems. Even things like the nurses aren't on proper contracts. Yeah. They're on a constant rotation. They don't know whether they've got a job. They haven't got a, so you know things like that is recognised that countries need that. They need we need but to. But it's become very political. This again hasn't it's it? It's become very political because that's one of the problems. I mean, Andalusian government is arguing with the central government, but it's the Andalusian government actually made a lot of cuts. Yes. Yeah. And, now they're, and saying, they're trying to yeah. pretend that they didn't, mm. Mm. but they did. I mean, there's a health centre in San Pedro that's stopped halfway through building because all of a sudden they, they decided it was getting a bit too expensive. Do you know, it's really interesting because I, I, we speak to a lot of clients. We're still in touch with, with all of our clients, really. And I would say the ones that I've spoken to, I would say 60, 70 percent of them are really anxious to come out, mm -hmm. really want to be here, yes. enjoy it. They kind of want to get moving again and get working again and mm -hmm. get... You know, all the plans have been on hold for pretty much three months yeah. and I think what they're doing now is right okay that's over now let's get on with life mm -hmm. you know whether it was buying a property in Spain or going on holiday or whatever it might be there are still about 30% I would say who are a little bit reticent who just kind of want to wait and, and make sure that everything's, yeah, everything's okay which is totally understandable it's a good way actually to define what stage the buyer is in mm -hmm. right because I had a few clients that wanted to buy or started to look and they kind of said well maybe in 2021 and now suddenly they say, I want to buy this year. Yeah. Okay. It just accelerated their, their need and desire. Which is like, what do, you want, what do you want in life when yeah. you get faced with well, potential I think, catastrophe? Exactly. I think people's, people's um, journey changes. I think they think, oh my God, let, we, let's do it now. So what we're noticing is people inquiring about uh, if they want something new, for instance, they're inquiring about things that are ready sooner than maybe two years down the line. Because, do I want to wait two years for a house to be ready? Uh, exactly. Who knows what's yeah. going to happen? And uh, also country properties and, and fairly, you know, properties up in the hills that may have been looked at as being a little bit isolated. Now it's like, yeah. I want a garden and a pool. People <laughs> like isolated. We yeah. want to be, we want to yeah. be somewhere like that rather yeah. than, you know, with, with the masses. But so on the other hand as well, that I've had people say to me, oh, I'm really glad I bought the apartment in a community because it's just locked up. I can't check on it, but at least I know yeah. that it's safe. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can leave it for six months, I can leave it for a year, yeah. but I know that it's fine. I'm not worrying about it being a house. You yeah. know, so there's it's it, it, both things have, have, have come up. And I think it was that Savills brought out a, a, a piece of research um, yesterday, I think it was, that, that said that they don't expect there to be a, a decline in the market here. It's a pause it's because there's, like there's no stock, there's no new stock. So it's not mm. driving prices down yeah. at the moment. I think there will be some bargains there because there will be a proportion of, of uh, vendors who, who do need to sell, whether they've lost their jobs or whatever, mm -hmm. but there won't be many. I don't think it's going to be a multitude of them. And I think institutional investors who are kind of like the, the what they called the sharks, yeah, the sharks, um, are on the lookout for those and they're buying them now when no one can move. Vultures, yeah. vultures. They call them. that's the one. Yeah, vultures. 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 <laughs> don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. Um, but they're the ones who are kind of looking for, for the pickings, aren't they? Yeah. Of, of the corpse, while the rest of us can't move anywhere to have a look at anything. So they're mm. they're in there now. You can't um, blame them. You can't blame them. That's what they that's what they should be doing. Um, oh, everyone likes a good bargain, right? Everyone loves a bargain, Dom. Everybody everyone loves a bargain. Black Friday, hello. Hello. So I do. love a bargain. Oh, you are. <laughs> How do we feel about working from home? Be very careful what you say. Here. <laughs> I I'm read used to that it. Spotify is going to eliminate all office spaces for 2021 and everyone's going to be working from home. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of big companies, companies realise will. it's doable. Yeah. Personally, for me, it's been a challenge. I've got two dogs, <laughs> very vocal dogs. Anything, <laughs> bang or anything, is like barking. So it's been a little bit of a nightmare yeah. for me, have to kind of plan calls and stuff like that. Um, but I've quite enjoyed it. I've had to got my routine in you know after 11 weeks now I think I was lucky because I a lot of I, I work from home a lot anyway yeah. but I work from home while my child is at school mm. so I've been facing the that. challenge no of, of working from home with this little voice going have you finished that's what you do now and how does that oh work boy. and can I help can I be your help you know that, that <laughs> can, that's, I that's yeah. how, can I be your help <laughs> you know I think I think, I think you know whether we kind of are more productive from home or the same or whatever I think what it's done though is it's it's meant that every organization in the world has reviewed their cost base mm. us included you know we've, we've looked at it and said do we actually need to do that do we need to pay that every month? Hang on a minute. And so, and then you, you know, you extrapolate that into big companies like British Airways, who I don't know the ins and outs, but have basically said, okay, well, this is a really good opportunity to get rid to of get twelve thousand people, exactly. and maybe we can rehire nine thousand of them on, on oh, worse terms. Exactly. So I think businesses are being canny, yeah. and they're looking at it as as cost saving mechanisms, um, which is fair enough, but yeah. at, at a human cost. Um, 
But I, I don't know. I mean, you are the guys that will be able to answer on your own behalf about whether you're more productive at home or in the office or... I think for a longer period of time, people like to have a sense of belonging, yeah. to be part of a community, to be part of a working environment and a familiar friend. I really miss friends. seeing you guys. Yeah. I'll say Aww. it loud and proud. She's admitted <laughs> it. She's admitted it. It's on tape. She she likes <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to come in the office and have a bit of yeah, banter exactly. and a bit of chat yeah. and yeah. talk about work. And yeah. when you're on Get your, your own, hand sanitizer very, out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I also do like mm. work. So I a, think it's good a balance of both. And it's created the opportunity to do that mm. um, mm. you know I've worked before in companies that didn't accept any kind of home working mm. even though you know you're getting the job done mm. I mean it's something I've done for years now in that I'll quite often get up very early um, you know people are used to getting emails from me at crazy time in the morning or crazy time at night because when you're home working you can fit it around family obligations and other obligations mm. yeah. and have that flexibility but again it's still then nice to have that interaction. But I know that a lot of companies are also looking at, at their remuneration schemes and saying okay well if people are at home we can't effectively manage them okay we can do it via Zoom and Skype or whatever but um, they're now moving towards a, a sort of um, performance based remuneration Which scheme. I think um, so they're saving they're saving money on, on premises and yeah. stuff like that but they're actually prepared to give more of their money to people who are prepared to work at home, but it's in a kind of risk reward kind of um, kind of nature. So businesses are, are moving. Yeah. You know, they're moving and, and psychologically they're changing yeah. about how the you know how they're going to reward people and how much they can trust people. And it's it's interesting. Yeah. It it's must be nice. Time. I mean, I've purposely never done it, but you know, people that live in cities that are commuting an hour, an hour and a half, two hours yeah. either way, yeah. you must. For as much as you enjoy a chat and a cup of coffee with somebody when you yeah, get there, yeah. you must, as a, as a human being, <laughs> feel better when you're not sitting on a train. So an extra two hours to on your de- on your working day to get to the office and then get back yeah. from the office. You know, the stress levels and things like that yeah. it must be. Again, it's a really it's a really interesting kind of dynamic as to because I, I own property in in London, yeah, and it's it's an interesting dynamic as to how is the city going to look. So mm. will it be just full of young people who want to be? Mm. On the doorstep, will the older people just move out, work from home, maybe go into the office once a week? That's almost like a shift has happened. It, it, yeah, yeah, it is, and people aren't quite sure it, where it's going yet. And was it needed? Yeah, you know, you look at somewhere like Canary Wharf, which is office space. Yeah. If a third of that is is not rented, okay, you know what happened yeah. to the residential accommodation nearby? And th- so there's, you know, there's all sorts of of factors at play here, and we yeah. don't quite know where it's all going to end up. But companies are thinking at the moment about. As I say, where they can save costs, where they how they can remunerate people in different ways, it, it's fascinating. It, it is it, interesting. It really I can is. I can be working from home and think I'm going to bake a banana bread <laughs> at yeah, one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm glad your mind's on the job. But then at eight you o'clock of an evening, I'll be doing a couple of hours yeah. work because yeah. I've done that yeah. my yeah, banana yeah, bread yeah. during yeah. the day. Well, so. What I do when it's creative, this type, you know, sometimes you can't be creative in a set allocated yeah. hour, and sometimes you just need to walk away mm. and when you are working from home you can walk away actually achieve a lot even if it's domestic yeah, yeah. drudgery yeah. but it's done and then you get back to it and actually wow yes I'm feeling inspired now well, I isn't, get this isn't, done it is, isn't there some different. countries where they work three day weeks mm. and a four day mm. weekend but the three day week is more productive than having yeah. them in they actually want they, to well, they say part time is more productive yeah. really yeah, four week four day week day, oh. and the majority said no yeah they want to work but also what I wanted to say before is that talking about working forces in companies, the German study showed that 30% of a company's employees do the work of 70% of people. Yeah. So effectively a company only needs 30% of the people, the staff, and the other 70 is just filler. We're definitely going to see a shift in, <coughs> in a lot of things. What I need, because you guys summed it up so beautifully, I would just put it nice and short, I just need peace and quiet. Oh. I've actually I came, in, I came in last week with Dom and yeah. he said, I hope you haven't come in to talk. I just want to sit in the choir. Yeah, I was like... I come in here today, Sean was here, he's blasting music, and my thoughts are already running wild. Peace and quiet, being able to reflect on my work is the most important. And it's very difficult for me to obtain that at home because when I'm home, everyone thinks I'm not working. Depends where so you live. So it's like, can you do it? this? Can you do that? Oh, and I, if I yeah. tell them I'm working, yeah. they just yeah. don't you understand. You have to create an area for yourself, yeah. though. No, but I mean, it, it doesn't work. You in, have in to, because I, I did that I in my house. Me. I don't have a spare bedroom. I have a three bedroom, 
but I don't have a spare, I can't have visitors now because I create, I was, you're working at the dining table, you're working at the kitchen table, you're moving yeah. around. And I did it a long time ago, but I literally thought, right, that's it. And I gave, away, have a I gave away the, right. the guest bed yeah. and yeah. I have a dedicated space. So like this morning, I was sitting at the computer and my little one kept coming in and it's like, I'm not here. Yeah. Here you are. No, 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 I'm at work. Go and talk to the other adult. You're in your office. office. Yeah, I'm you're in, in my your office. office. Yeah, yeah. Go away. And I'm sure, oh, but, you, but no. You it's have to create that yeah. space. Yeah. You see, my office has become my kitchen table, yeah, which is means I'm there with my, don't get put off your dinner. I'm there in my shorts and my vest, <laughs> and I'm watching watching Good Morning Britain, Loose Women. No, turn the telly off. Who's after Loose Women? Oh, it's uh, Eamon, and, Eamon and Ruth and all that. Anyway, <laughs> it's, um, it's great fun, mm. but I don't get much work done. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same issue. You get so much done, more done. We've, if you... we've, it's like a... Open like, counselling like, session. Did you just touch me? Did you just touch me? Get the sanitizer. I'm such a feeling. That's all doomed anyway. What I've missed is hugging people. Oh, we say hello and give oh we've got him wanting to bloody. Oh, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you need to create an area. What's left of humanity if we can't express our emotions? And I'm sorry. Can we end on saying what's the most appropriate? Greeting now. Is it? Is no, it's, it's, no, no. I've been doing that. It's Don't quite funny as well. Do you know what I'd like to do? I'd I like just to say hi. Oh yeah, I like, I like that. that. I like that. I don't want to touch anyone. I don't want to do. I, just I know you. you. You violated me. <laughs> yeah, but this is. You know what? I have to quickly say. That's what I'm really worried about. Go on. Is that phobia that we create to human touch? I know. And that's yeah, one of the most beautiful things we and can do. And especially kids. Human touch. Kids. But handshakes. Exchange. Handshakes have always been one of the the. It's germ spreaders, haven't they? Oh, yeah. no, but it's in your no, paws. You spread more. Yeah, it's true. You spread more germs shaking hands than actually giving kisses yes. to each other. Yeah. So I'm we could actually all snog, that. and it would be. Right, cool. Yeah. Turn the camera off. <laughs> and no. Um, so does that mean handshakes have gone? Yeah. Are they? Are they? No, Somebody no. went to shake my hand yesterday. No. Really? They did. I just went. Sorry. Did you name and shame no. them? Are they on Facebook? No, I'm not naming and shaming them. I think for the time, <laughs> she'll tell for us the later time being. Yeah. But, but the thing Maybe, there's, there's but positives there's positive to it. I mean, for instance, on in communities, we have a lift in our community, and one of the rules is one person don't lick the, the lift. <laughs> don't lick the lift. Don't lick the lift. Oh, but also, don't share the lift. It's actually quite nice because mm. you know, it's horrible sharing with the lift. someone. So you know, and oh. so you, there, Rebecca's become antisocial. Yeah, I've this one wants to isolate person. in the office with the door shut. <laughs> this one wants to but touch it's our everyone. True, our true being is coming. But do you know what else is horrible? Is you become so kind of cold in the perception of people when mm. they also wear the masks. Because a, you can't shake, you can't see that little smile. Yeah, but also I think it makes you be yeah, more smiley. Like you need to know. I'm it's like gloves. I know no, that nice. when I smile at someone, they need to really see I'm smiling. Mm. So, right, they can so see I the turned wrinkles. into this exactly. <laughs> I turned into this, this crazy smiley eyed person. <laughs> walking down. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're wearing glasses. No, those masks up. need... <gasps> yeah, the steamed up glasses over I'm masks. I'm walking around, I can't see anything because it's either steam up or take the glasses off. No, the masks, the masks have got to go. I might, I might go and hibernate until the masks are allowed That's to... That's what I said. Yeah. Just wait till the steam up. You don't... I mean, Elliot's doing that. He, he does... He hates wearing the mask. We had to go out and buy him some new shoes because he literally couldn't walk. <laughs> Bless him. Going to social but, services. But, exactly. But other than that... We just let's just wait till it's because uh, it said. is uncomfortable. You know me, I'm the Hollywood recluse. <laughs> I've become more of a Hollywood recluse more than ever. Up in the hills. Hi down there. With the dogs. I'm going to go home song. soon and appear again in a week. I will. Right, yeah. is it time for tricky Ricky? That's How about my, the last that's question? My, oh, what was the last question? Which, Which things, things have, have become, become more important? important? Oh, haven't we covered that? Oh. I think we kind of covered it. Stop being pedantic. Food. <laughs> <laughs> we are obsessed with food. You and your banana cake. I'm obsessed with food. Right, I've, I've bought mine in so okay. we have um people who deliver every day our breakfast lunch and dinner oh wow so much <laughs> spoiled <laughs> i know i, feel like no, I worked again. it out i worked it out right it's beautiful food it's fantastic food it really is and you just stick it in the microwave a couple of minutes and it's, it's done so it's you like, eat microwave food well it's cooked and then you just heat it up oh, okay yeah yeah okay. but it's really good stuff and i'm food lazy i'm lazy lazy really but food lazy in that i just eat what's put in front of me and this is great because it's all, I know I'm eating nice stuff. And we're not great cooks. But you I have plenty I, time to learn to. I know, I know how. but yeah, I wrote a book instead. Yeah, some people don't have it in them, right? I tend to know how well, a lovely lunch. Lovely yeah. lunch is like my main meal of the day. Mm. Really, really nice. And um, before this, I was running around eating croissants, McDonald's. I haven't got time for this, okay. I haven't got time for that. I, I think I eat, now I've I'm been eating, eating healthier yeah. because so you have got. Have you gained or lost weight? I've not actually weighed myself. <laughs> yeah, hang on a minute. <laughs> 
gained. <laughs> what Have I've you? done is, yeah. just, is taken the stress, and I'll probably continue with it, because I didn't particularly want to go to a big supermarket. I've take, So I did online shopping, and the only place that was doing online shopping was Corte Inglés, which is a bit more expensive, oh, yeah. a bit more exclusive, but it actually has much more interesting stuff. Oh, I, don't, I, totally, never even, yeah. I never considered it, because you kind of think, oh, Corte Inglés supermarket is just a oh, it's, it's more expensive, it's got, that's for it sure. It is, but it's got a fabulous, it's it's got a fabulous website. It's more expensive than Mercadona. Yeah. But you don't buy yeah, your yeah. basics there, so you buy, exactly. you buy your interesting ingredients. So I've actually, I'm not a natural chef. Cooking is not, cooking is not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I've now got interesting ingredients in my house that because that, I've shopped at Corte Inglés and I can actually make so dinner party around at yours then. Mm, that's just probably pushing well, it. I probably but never we've had moved past sandwiches. What are you eating, Dom? Oh, vegetables. No meat. We're all vegetarians at home. Are you? Yeah. So we haven't been eating meat for three that's months. What to the hair. Why? I'm not thinking well, he's vegetarian. That's, that's, this that's is another, just, I've just, I've just found this out. Because podcast. he's at home. That's another podcast. But well, you're not a vegetarian. And I right? also, I am now. You I converted. Now. I was a vegetarian for many years, but I let myself go. But anyways, what I realized as well is so that we you create the these anyway. neurotransmitters to foods that you think give you instant satisfaction, like McDonald's, or cheeseburger, or chicken McNuggets, and that just disappeared. I had it a was McDonald's yesterday. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's open! Okay. <laughs> it called me right. as I was driving past. So I even turned I think, around. I think I'm going to become the recluse now. I'm just going to go hide in my So Don's gone hands. veggie and grown his hair. Oh my God. Rebecca's going to have a dinner party with all the ingredients that she's never going to use. It's all going to go off now. Of course. Sean, Sean, Sean will give us microwave food. food. Yeah. Yeah. Come around to mine, you get great British food. TV. Bing! <laughs> uh, and Emma's baking banana bread. Well, yeah. Emma, we will never find because she'll be recluse somewhere. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> but happy. Yeah. <laughs> happy with no money. I don't think no you really job. said things that have become important food. I know that was it, wasn't it? Food, yeah. that's it. Yeah. That's all Family, I wanted to say. People that we like. Oh. No? Oh okay. no. <laughs> Alright guys. <laughs> Forget them. I think we should end the Zoom. Of them. Oh, I'm bored, I'm bored of Zoom. No, but the ones you live with, the ones you choose to be with. That's but you didn't right. even oh, choose. I, know. I, mean, I, I wonder how many are buried under the patio. I've enough of them. I must admit, it, it's like, okay, I'm really glad that I like my husband. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. And you realise you're 12 weeks nearly, what did you say, 11 weeks. Actually, I still like him. Well, I've got I, I've got abandonment <laughs> issues leaving him now. Because it's like, ooh, I've no we've been idea. together for 12 I'm, weeks. It's like, It was the ooh, same when I went shopping. She's like, just Can call I, me when you get there. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me know how it was. And then, the actually, the, one of the first time we went shopping, I said when I came back, everyone gathered. It's like, tell us how was it. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like out in the real world? Yeah, yeah. It's like, has anything changed? Can you see that there is something yeah. going on? And yeah. it's like, wow. Yeah, no, it's a bit. It's I'm not strange. sure how going back to school in September is going to go after literally being together from like March all the way through. Oh, just leave them there with a note round. There's going to be a bit of separation. I'll be fine, but there'll be a bit of separation. I'm sorry. We'll go back to that first world. day of school. Well, hey, hey, yeah. Maybe, first going to school. It maybe it's going to be liberating for him. He's like, fine. It's fine. Yeah. That's what he is. Oh, yeah. I think as long as he's got his friends, that's... they are running the school, he'll be like, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going to be like excited yeah. to be... But even that, we're not sure how it's going to work. So now they're talking about part-time school. Yeah, there might not be any teachers there. There might not even be any school. Schools for other sporting systems of indoctrination. <gasps> right. <laughs> anyway, no. time to go. So thank you for joining us. We'll be um, back to you soon when we've got something um, interesting to talk about. Because we've might actually be, been out and done stuff. Might be some time. Uh, we've actually got some clients. No. Um, we're hoping to see clients next week. In fact, we've been seeing clients. Clients are here. Clients are here. Yeah. Uh, which is great, by the way. The These are the ones are that have been trapped here. Yeah, <laughs> the ones that are trapped, and there's some, jeez, there's some really wealthy people here. I'm talking billionaires, man. I know some stuff. Wow. Yeah. But they're in their little residence. They came here for a holiday. They yeah. were just trapped. But hey, they realized it's nice here. They, it's a nice place to be stuck. Yeah, it's a nice place and they to be then start to think maybe I should do a buying. Yeah, yeah. Decision. No, it's true. We're doing, we're doing deals. We're doing, we're making appointments. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it'd be nice to welcome you if you fancy coming to see us and join you in the madhouse. Until then, thank you for joining us and we will see you very soon. Ciao. Take care.